Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, Auditor General faces critical public accounts committee. Over 300 polluting cars seized. And former education minister opts for silence. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Smith. Public Accounts Committee members are questioning the Office of the Auditor General on why errors in the government's latest financial report were publicly released without consulting the committee first. Opposition MP Aseri Randronro and Ratanangama Lalambalavu are also questioning the OAG and the Economy Ministry's intention to go public with the errors without first consulting the Public Accounts Committee. However, FBC News understands there is no law that requires the OAG to consult the committee regarding any mistakes before going public. Public. Kelly Vavala reports. On the first of this month, Auditor General Ajay Nand admitted there were key errors in the government financial audit report for the year ending July 31, 2016. But now some opposition members making up the Public Accounts Committee wants to know why he made a media statement on the issue. The initiation of this uh, supplementary exercise. Who initiated this exercise and why was it not brought to the committee's attention? Rather than choosing the way uh, going to the public to to correct the, uh, the significant errors that you've mentioned. Before. Ministry for Economy Permanent Secretary Makareta Kondrati says the ministry had initiated the process of going public because it wanted all Fijians to know parts of the report contained glaring mistakes. The Ministry of Economy initiated the they invited me into a meeting so I could have the respect. Oh, for the meeting? Yeah. The meeting of 31st of uh, the Minister of Economy initiated the meeting. By that time, obviously, the reports were tabled uh, with the last As uh, the Auditor General mentioned, we had a meeting as uh, professionals and we agreed that there were some errors in, in the report, which the Auditor General also accepted. Uh, and then, following that, we decided uh, that um, the press conference. Uh, one opposition member also accused the Auditor General of undermining himself. There's a lot of uh, questions that uh, will come up with, within the committee. The uh, comments are very, I don't think we have a repeat of this anymore. We improve the processes and also I humbly request the committee to set up some ground which a gentleman's agreement currently. It's not, not binding on anyone. The Office of the Auditor General and the Ministry of Economy also highlighted some of the challenges faced when compiling such reports, such as transfer of important information by outgoing key staff to incoming new staff. Kelly Badala, FBC News. Acting Prime Minister Ayaz Said Kayyum says recent comments by union leaders regarding the civil service reform agenda make it apparent they have no concern for the well-being of civil servants. Said Kayyum says for six months the government has been trying to meet with union leaders to formally begin the negotiation process. However, they have stalled, dithered and failed to come to the negotiating table. Rachel Nath reports. The Attorney General says he'd like to work constructively, but instead the union leadership has violated the amended Employment Regulations Act 2015 by failing to enter into any negotiation process prior to proposing a secret strike ballot. Said Kiyum says it is deeply ironic that the union would put forward unfounded allegations that government had not adhered to regulations when they themselves so blatantly violated the law. He noted they are now gasping at straws by threatening to file a complaint with the International Labour Organization to stall implementation of the reforms and limit Fiji's economic potential. Said Kiyum says without any support from the union leadership, civil servants have been granted pay rises of up to 70 to 80 percent for the first time in history. And they welcome the reform agenda with an overwhelming positive response during the government roadshow. Rachel Nath, FBC News. 
346 vehicles were seized by the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service since they signed a Memorandum of Understanding with regular authorities in 2003. Senior Customers Officer Chosevatan Galumbao says the agreement has helped them seize vehicles that were not environmentally friendly. Ana Ravulo has more. The Memorandum of Understanding has enhanced the work of the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service. It has resulted in healthy and constructive dialogue, but more importantly, it has possibly contributed towards the development of quality international customs standards. And those kind of standards have been benchmarked through to the other regional customs administration. Ngalambula made the revelation during the Ozone Day celebration in Suva today. Assistant Minister for Environment Lorna Eden says celebrating such day is vital. We have all come to appreciate the valiant role played by the ozone layer in the atmosphere, fortifying every living thing on Earth from the harmful ultraviolet rays emitted from the sun. The 30th anniversary of the Montreal Protocol was also celebrated with the Ozone Day. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. Former Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy will not be giving any evidence in court. Dr. Reddy appeared before the Chief Magistrate this morning and chose to remain silent. The Defence Council informed the court that they will be filing written submissions. It was earlier stated that Dr. Reddy will be the only defence witness. Dr. Reddy is charged with one count of bribery and one count of undue influence by the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption. It is alleged that he offered a steady water source for Ra High School to influence the vote of one Waisel Mbombo, who is the school manager. It is also alleged that Dr. Reddy interfered with the free exercise or performance of a political right of Limbombo. The matter has been adjourned to November 21st for submissions and for the prosecution to respond. Two police officers involved in the alleged escape of a Raman prisoner last week have been suspended with an investigation underway to establish the circumstances that led to the incident. Investigators have also been directed to look into issues of supervision and command to prevent the reoccurrence of such escapes. 33-year-old Inok Ngandre escaped from the custody of the two police officers last Friday at the government buildings. Ngandre was being escorted to court when he allegedly escaped. He is still on the run. The government has requested the villages of Sawani and Naitasiri to relocate to higher grounds as they are experiencing the effects of climate change. The village is located in a flood-prone area and around 400 villages get affected after continuous rain for 48 hours. Savaratambo reports. The Sawani village lies beside the Waimano River and get easily flooded. Former village headman Chosu Mbale Mila says the Prime Minister had proposed to the village to relocate during his visit late last year. He pointed at a small hill beside the village and told us to relocate there. But the landowners have to agree and give us that piece of land to build our house on. 68-year-old Richelli Naitenge recalled the recent disaster which affected the village. The water level reaches our rooftops when it floods. Children are often transported through tubs and even bamboo rafts. It is so hard for us to survive like this. Commissioner Central Setere Kitale says that they are carrying out an assessment to relocate those villages that are vulnerable to floods. What we are doing now is we are looking at options. Um, whether relocate would be the, the only option or whether there, there can be other options that can be utilized to mitigate the effects of climate change on those communities. There are 75 households and 400 people living in Sawani village. Many of these villages depend on farming for their daily source of income and their crop is often damaged due to flooding. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Still to come, slow response to FRCS amnesty period. And farmers urge to look for new buyers. Stay with us. Bula. Bula FM, number 2 and Seri.
The amnesty period for declaration of offshore assets to the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service has seen a slow start. Chief Executive Viswanath Das says with taxpayers' behavior, it is likely that more declarations will come forth when it's near to closing date. Das says the last time the Revenue and Customs held this amnesty period, close to a half a million dollars worth of assets were declared. He adds the second amnesty program is the general amnesty, whereby it gives small and medium enterprises who have a turnover of one point five million dollars the ability to use this platform so at, the, at this point in time it's, it's, it's slow but you know because the period uh, ends uh, last till, till uh, 31st December so our previous experience so we expect more of these declarations to be, to be coming in November and December Meanwhile, the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service will soon start publishing names of those businesses that have not lodged their VAT returns. Chief Executive Viswanath Das says names published will be of those businesses who have failed to lodge their returns for a period of six months or more from the date in which such returns are to be lodged. The Ministry of Health and Medical Services is carrying out minor repairs at CWM Hospital's labor ward. The hospital management started cleaning up the ward last Friday, and as a result, the labor ward has been temporarily moved to the birthing unit. Medical Superintendent Dr. Chemesa Tundravu says they are also cleaning the dirt in the ceiling. The work is expected to com be complete within two weeks. And so we're basically pulling down the ceiling, collecting all the dirt, um, and at the same time, we're doing some minor repairs around the place. And um, we'll also be painting uh, uh, the rooms and just a little bit fresher um, um, outcome when, you know, when uh, our staff come back, at least they'll come back to a, to a cleaned up, uh, painted uh, space. Meanwhile, the Health Ministry reiterates there is no outbreak of fleas at the CWM Hospital's maternity unit, contrary to suggestions made by one media organization about fleas being present at the hospital. Communications Fiji Limited told FBC News Today that it had reported that fleas may have been present in the labor ward and that its radio report did not say that fleas were present in the ward. The health ministry has rubbished any suggestions of fleas present anywhere, real or imaginary. The Agriculture Ministry is working on identifying buyers for locally grown food before engaging in large-scale farming. Launching the new guava variety Green Pearl in Singatoka yesterday, Agriculture Minister Niese Ruratu urged farmers to liaise with the ministry to search for potential buyers. Sanya Nimboila reports. The ministry wants the farmers to connect and deal with potential buyers themselves rather than relying on the middlemen. And that's basically what we wanted to do now to link the farmers directly to the market rather than having the middleman in between so that you can enjoy the benefits of your labor, get the maximum return out of it. Seri Ratu says the processing of locally grown food remains a challenge for the ministry. And there is an abundance of tomatoes. Everybody consumes the fresh tomato, the rest goes to the rubbish tin. But uh, why can't uh, we do tomato sauce uh, in food processes in Watuanga, but the paste comes from China. New World Supermarket Chief Executive Anyao Patel says they want consistent supply of local foods and vegetables to their supermarkets. Very custom uh, farmers to plant and go to us. We will guarantee you whatever we commit, we'll buy. Don't worry about the price. When your crop is ready, we will come to terms and we'll buy that. The ministry released a new guava variety known as the Green Pearl yesterday, which is being sold at the Singatoka Research Station. Sainia Nimboila, FPC News. Ahead in Sports with Jamie, we have all the action from NRC, but up next is Rachel with Business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. FHL plans to invest in tourism industry. And in growing Fiji, FRA continues road rehabilitation. Stay with us. I'm Anare Sorbokroa of Nayabu Wendemburga Telebu. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits.
We're here at Tano Waterfront Lost of the Love Listening to Gold FM. Only, only the, the classic, classic hit. Gold FM. Only the classic hit. Welcome back, Leading Business Tonight. The Fijian Holdings Limited Group's growth in the last financial year is widely attributed to its tourism subsidiaries. In light of this, the group plans to further expand in the tourism industry this financial year. Chief Executive Nozat Farid says FHL is in discussion with three potential investors to venture into accommodation tourism. Farid says FHL is looking at an existing project for investment. He says the group is also looking at opportunities in the health and agricultural sector. Tourism for Fijian Holdings means all our investment is actually on water. That is South Sea Cruises, Blue Lagoon Cruises, Vinaka Fiji, uh, Yasawa Holidays and Malamala Club. It's all something with water. We don't have any accommodation, so which we used to be in the past. So we are seriously evaluating few potentials for tourism properties. And we now join Savanada from HFC Bank with the latest from the money world. Pinaka, let's look at the economic calendar for this week. This morning, New Zealand released its trade balance for August. It showed a deficit of negative $1.24 billion from a trade surplus the previous month of $98 million. The deficit was a result of an increase in imports and a reduction in its exports during the month. Tomorrow morning, the United States releases its home price indices, which are expected to rise from 5.7% to 5.8%. And positive movement is expected in new home purchases and home sales change for the month of August. Generally speaking, if consensus is correct, we can expect a stronger U.S. dollar tomorrow against a basket of currencies that influence our Fijian dollar. That's the economic lineup this week. Vinaka. Thanks, Savanada. On to today's exchange rates and foreign currencies in the Fijian dollar. As you can see, there was a general increase across the rates today as the Fijian dollar strengthened against the Chinese yuan, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar to close at 3.20, 60 cents and 66 cents, while our dollar weakened against the American dollar and the PNG, Kina and Japanese yen to close at 48 cents, 136 Kina and 53.30 yen. As for the commodities market, an increase across the index with oil prices closing at 52.13 a barrel. Gold was up to close at 1,310 per ounce and silver followed suit closing at 17.19 an ounce. And in Going Fiji tonight, the Fiji Roads Authority has begun a number of road rehabilitation projects in the central, western and northern divisions. The FRA says the rehabilitation is to protect the roads before the upcoming wet season and maintaining waterproofing of existing seals, an essential requirement which can increase the lifespan of the road of much to 20 years. That was business and coming up in sports, it suffers huge defeat at futsal tournament. This and more after the break. I am from the Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is number one. It's so hot. हम लोग बार टाउन के केरिया ड्राइवर लोगों ने हम लोग के मिर्ची एफएम सुनो अच्छा लगे मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट हाय मैं संध्या नारियल रेफ्रिज़ से मेरे सारे दोस्त मिर्ची एफएम सुनते हैं मिर्ची एफएम इज़ हॉट आई लव मिर्ची हमें इस बीन तक ताबूआ के मिर्ची एफएम में सबसे अच्छा गाना बजे मिर्ची एफएम इट
The Fiji Airways Nrua left for Australia early this morning for its next two matches in the NRC. The squad is fairly unchanged from the teams that's, that's featured in its home games. However, coach Senirusi Serubakula has roped in three more players for this leg of the competition. Joining the side is back row utility Sekiu Sangavindi and Alvariti Vetokani, along with lock Mateasi Udutambua. Fiji-born Perth Spirit player Isi Naisarani will be joining the Brumbies in Super Rugby next season. Really excited to, to join the Brumbies uh, this uh, after the NRC. Yeah, I'm really look forward to it. But uh, uh, first, uh, uh, but um, my focus is to play for for the Perth Spirit first and uh, represent uh, Western Australia for my great, uh, great ability. Meanwhile, Fijian Filippo Ndangunu made his, de made his debut in the NRC in style with a 75-metre solo try for Queensland country to help them beat the Sydney Rays 50 points to 24. Ndangunu evaded seven pairs of groping hands in a veering long-range run for his first try and later dashed onto an inside pass from fly half Hamish Stewart for a second. The Fiji Barbarians seventh side has arrived in Germany for the October Fest tournament later this month. The team is led by Vodafone Fiji 7's assistant coach Sayasi Fuli and manager Mark Brown. The tournament takes place this Friday and Saturday. Other national teams taking part include Australia, South Africa, England and France. Fiji 7's coach Gareth Baber is also using the tournament to gauge his players before selecting the national squad for the start of the World 7 Series in Dubai. A number of national records were broken by Fiji swimmers at the Asian Indoor Games in Turkmenistan yesterday. Matili Tambu and Romo broke an 11-year-old record in the 200 meters individual medley, recording a time of 2 minutes and 19.43 seconds, breaking Rachel Akwe's record of 2 minutes 54.40 seconds set in 2006. She also set new national records in the 100 meters butterfly and 200 meters freestyle events. Netani Ross set a new national record in the 100 meters backstroke. Taichi Vakasama set a new record in the 100 meters breaststroke. And Epeli Rambua set a new record in the 50 meters breaststroke. Team records were also broken in the 4x50 meter medley, 4x100 meter freestyle, and the 4x50 meter freestyle events. After the big losses to South Africa earlier this month, the Fiji Pearls have been run ragged. The Pearls have been working hard to improve its match fitness and speed in preparation for the Europe Open Championship in Cardiff next month. Meli Tavanga has more. The loss against South African Proteus side is still fresh in the minds of these players and they don't want to repeat this in the Europe Tour next week. We've had a very uh, good week on court. The girls are working extremely hard, have all got blisters on their feet, so I think that's an indication of the effort that they're putting, putting in. The Fijian Pearls, ranked seventh in the world, will be making their first visit to Wales and will line up against England. Eighth ranked Wales, tenth place Scotland and twelfth seeded Northern Ireland. You know, England play very differently to Northern Ireland, again to Wales, so it's about players being able to recognise different styles of play to be able to react and and respond. This will be a key opportunity for the Fijian side to put their training and preparations on display ahead of the 2018 Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast, Australia. We need to work on endurance and uh, as I mentioned the, the speed together with explosiveness, that quick reaction that uh, uh, needs to be that they need to be trained on. The championships will be held from next Friday. Melitavanga, FBC Sports. AFL Fiji is urging the public to support its grand final function with the screening of the 2017 AFL Premiership, which will be held at the Novotel in Lamy on Saturday. The final. The AFL Grand Final is the biggest sporting event that Australia sees every year. The, the nation stops. The MCG will be packed with over 100,000 people on Saturday. Um, so, yeah, if you're looking to get involved, if you want to know a little bit more about this sport, come down. Um, follow us on Facebook. Come down to the Novotel on Saturday. The Fiji Central side were thumped eight goals to one by Indo Solomon in its opening match of the National Higher Pacific Tents International Futsal Championship in Suva. The side, which has the likes of Samuela Kautonga, Tayone Kerebonua, Dinesh Murulia and Joseph Mishra, were humiliated in front of their home crowd. In the game earlier, USP Solo beat USP Vanuatu by three goals to two. The games continue this evening at the Vodafone Arena in Suva. And the Premier League Arsenal has moved within six points of leaders Manchester City, sweeping aside West Brom two goals to nil. The Gunners... 
That's it from sports this evening. Angie joins you later on with weather. And in the world of the weird and the wonderful, a look at how much beer enthusiasts from all over the world are spending to be part of the 180th Oktoberfest in Munich, Germany. That's coming up. Bola, <laughs> New media, Panasonic's tough book CF33 is an armored two-in-one for extreme conditions. 20 years in the making, Panasonic's rugged tablet and keyboard combo is prepared to take a beating. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. We enjoyed what I call brilliant sunny spells around Fiji today. We were indeed in luck to have a little fun bath. Looking at the west, after a few morning showers, the day was all clear and dry. Such a lovely day to be out and about. Eastwards from Pek Harbor to Suva, a day of full on sunshine, quite amazing. And up north, all clear and beautiful for the day. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots with rough seas. And for the tides, high tide tonight will be at 11.09 with low tide tomorrow morning at 5.42. See the beauty of sunrise at 5.52. For tomorrow, the weather looks quite changeable. It's time to farewell sunshine as many centers will be experiencing rain and heavier rain is indicated for the northern areas. Tomorrow's temps, the western division will be much warmer with highs of 30 degrees. And looking further on to Thursday, guess we are in the rainy season. Yes, I'm talking about more rain, which is likely to get heavier at times with gusty winds. And that's our FPC weather for tonight. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. On Fiji Pulse today, we asked, should we install more speed cameras on our highways? Uh, the reason uh, I would say that, uh, I, uh, that we should have more cameras is because of the increase in road fatalities. Well, that is uh, evidence by itself, that speaks for itself. I think government should install more speed cameras to reduce road accidents for the safety of pedestrians. I think more cameras should be installed on our roads because there's a lot of accident happening. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, how much would you spend to dress up for a beer festival? People and tourists going to Germany's third largest city have been spending as much as $800 on costumes to attend the 184th Oktoberfest Beer Festival. Recapping the main stories, Auditor General faces critical public accounts committee, over 300 polluting cars seized, and Fiji Pearls prepares for Wales tour. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, are local players in the Fijian draw ready for flying Fijian duties? Visit our FBC website to answer. Our shot of the day was sent by Jesco Singer, another sunset view captured from the Nukuba at Voli Voli Beach Resort in Rakiraki. Thanks so much, Jesco, for that shot. We'd like to encourage all our viewers to send in more pictures of our beautiful Fiji, whether it's our tropical flowers, waterfalls, or even your favorite pit. Just send them through to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye for now. Que
Nirom my Sinatoka, Peron do Talitak and Avoro Rong and Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. I have a runner in the Radio Fiji One and Domoy Viti. I have a silly talent, and I have a silly talent. Kita telah terjadi yang kedua nasib balik pun nampak dorong, barong ena radio fijuan nampak mewiti. Radio fijuan nampak mewiti nampak orang ni biennan.